Praise the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord. He tells us that we must do this. In Matthew 6 and 33, you know the scripture very well. Jesus said it, didn't he? He said, but seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We've got a responsibility to seek the Lord. The great theologian C.S. Lewis, he wrote this in his book, The Great Divorce. He says, I think earth, if chosen instead of heaven, will turn out to be and have been all along only a region in hell. And earth, if put second to heaven, to have been from the beginning a part of heaven itself. When you put God first, wherever you are, you're going to be in heaven. You're going to have the glory of God. You're going to have the things of God, amen, blessing your life. By seeking the Lord, the things that this life possesses will not be lost or forfeited. Instead, they will be added to your life as God directs and as God orchestrates. Huh. The grass does not dictate to the sky when it's supposed to rain. Instead, it prepares itself for the coming blessing. When the rain comes, the grass does not complain that the amount that it received was too much or not enough. But it drinks all that it is given. Today's scripture, church, tells us to seek God until the rain of righteousness begins to fall. Because, listen now, it will fall. Are you prepared for a blessing? Are you prepared for a blessing? Because it will fall. In fact, Hosea, again, in the sixth chapter of his prophecy, and the third verse, says this. He says this. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, come on, as the latter and the former rain onto the earth. God's going to rain on you. God's blessing is there for you. It's not about whether God is going to do anything. It's whether or not we're ready for what God is going to do. You see, the Bible says, we just read it there, that God is prepared to bless, prepared as the morning. What does that mean? It speaks to certainty. One thing I know, if I'm not here tomorrow, if you're not here tomorrow, if someone you love doesn't see the morning, the morning is coming. Praise God. That's why we could learn from this, amen, and take comfort in it. The word says, amen, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, amen, is coming. Joy comes in the morning. God has prepared the morning. What are we talking about? The certainty of God being a blessing to your life. Are you hearing this? The certainty of God's blessing in your heart. The certainty of God's blessing in your life. Never give up on God. Because God isn't finished yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The question must be today, are you prepared to receive? Are you prepared to receive? You remember in Matthew 25, you don't need to go there, just listen for a moment. In Matthew 25, the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. You remember that? Amen? And you remember that five were prepared. 
Hmm? But five were not. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the bridegroom came, he had a blessing for everyone. It had nothing to do, amen, with him coming or not coming. In fact, they knew he was coming. Praise God. Amen. How many people know that sooner or later it's going to rain again? My wife has broken me of the habit of walking out the house without an umbrella. Amen. In fact, she got one and put it in my car. Praise the Lord. Because I've gotten stuck out there without an umbrella a time or two. Amen. Amen. You should just know something. It's going to rain after a while. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you don't want to get stuck out in it. Amen. See, the thing about it is we understand the certainty of God's blessing. The bridegroom came, five were ready, five were not. Five were ready to receive and five were not. Five had their wicks trimmed and oil in their lamps. Five did not. Praise the Lord. We must stay prepared and ready for what God is going to do. Amen. Now, how do we prepare to be blessed? How do we prepare to be blessed? Scripture after scripture tells us that God blesses us on a daily basis. Those who seek him, those who seek him, he tells us that you are to be blessed on a daily basis. Go to the book of Psalms and go to the 68th Psalm. Psalm 68. Look at this. Psalm 68 and verse 19. I've got to go ahead. I've got a lot to, to, to cover today, and I want to make sure I get it, get it in. Look at verse 19 of Psalm 68. Listen to what it says. Blessed be the Lord. Who what? Somebody say daily. Nobody sounds excited. Daily. But look at this. Low death. That ought to get somebody shouting. Low death. Amen. Your neighbor. The person down the street, the person who really deserves it, the person who didn't sin last week, it says us. That means everybody. Amen. He daily loadeth us with what? Benefits. Amen. Even the God of our salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing that? Amen. Matthew 6 and 11. Listen to what Jesus said when he taught us how to pray. He said what? Give us. This day, our daily bread. I like it how Luke puts it. Luke puts it a little differently in the 11th chapter in the third verse. He says, give us day by day. It doesn't matter how it comes, Lord. I want it. Every single day, I need your benefits. Every single day, I don't want to miss it. Every single day, whatever you got, I want. Every single day, I don't know what my life is going to require tomorrow, but I know my God has already made a way, hallelujah, to make sure that I have everything I need. He has loaded my day with his blessing, hallelujah. I don't want to be in the way of not receiving what God has for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, ask your neighbor, are you ready for a blessing? Praise his name. Amen. How do we prepare? How do we prepare? Amen. And I'm not here today, folks, to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to tell you today what God's blessing is on your life. A lot of people are trying to do that today. Amen. I'm not here to try and define what God's supposed to give anybody because I don't know. I don't even know what I need. My Bible tells me that. He says, you don't even know how to pray as you ought. You don't even know what you have need of. Your father knows what you have need of before you know that you need it. Come on. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm not here to tell you anything, tell you to hop on one foot, turn around, amen, touch the sky, or anything like that because this is going to happen, amen, to do this or do that because that is going to happen. No, I'm here to tell you to trust God. I'm here today to tell you to trust the Lord, Amen. With all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not here to tell you what the blessing is going to be. Amen. I know we have some blessings that are very obvious. Life itself. Health and strength. Amen. All that is wonderful. We receive on a daily basis. But there are other blessings. More personal and specific that God has prepared to deliver on to you. Somebody say unto me. Amen. Unto you. Amen. God hasn't got, God's arm is not short. God hasn't run out of anything. There's no shortage in heaven of anything. 
Glory to God. Amen. Let you know on a secret, there's no shortage of anything here on earth either. Amen. It's just evil and greed. Amen. That's all it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just, I just want to know, are you willing to, to, to what? To believe God? Amen. More specific, more personal. God is prepared to deliver unto you. Are you prepared to receive it? So now, quickly today, how do you prepare for your daily provision? How do you prepare for your daily blessing? Number one, the prophet Hosea tells us in verse 12. He says, number one, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Number one, sow to yourselves in righteousness. What does that mean? Learn to expect from God. Come on. God is your source. Hmm. He's not something you do on Sunday morning. He's not something you do on Wednesday evening. He's not something you do when you get in trouble. He's not something you talk, amen, God is your source, amen. If God ain't in it, amen, you ain't got nothing. Pray, I know it, I, that wasn't very good English, I know, I know. Let me clean that up. No, that's about as good as I can do right now. <laughs> Praise God, amen. He doesn't need, listen, God does not need our expectation to bless us, but he gave us expectation and desire for a reason. Amen. Praise God. He gave it to us so that we would learn to desire him above all else. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. Here's how he puts it. He puts it this way. He says, for the earnest expectation of the creature, that's us, waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. I'm waiting to see how God's going to manifest in my life. That's my earnest expectation. My great desire, in other words, is I want to see what God's going to do for me next. Doesn't matter what challenges I'm going through. Doesn't matter how difficult it is. Amen. It doesn't matter what I'm having a, a, right now. Amen. If I'm going through a blessing, amen, that I'm happy about, or there's a blessing in my life, amen, that I'm not happy about. Praise the Lord. See, some people think trouble isn't a blessing. Come on. Amen. It all comes from God. Amen. And we're blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I'm blessed. My Bible says going out. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in my basket. I'm blessed in my store. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if I like it or not. If it suits me or not, if I'm happy with it or not, it's still the hand of God in my life. Praise the Lord. And my expectation is this. Lord, what you going to do for me next? What you going to show me next, Lord? It's my earnest desire, my expectation. When the believer's desire or his expectation lines up with God's will. Huh. Did you get that? When the believer's desire or the believer's expectation lines up with God's will, <laughs> then God will fulfill that desire. You ever wonder why you pray and it, as James says, you pray amiss? You don't seem like you're getting your, your questions, your, your, your prayers answered? It's because you won't line up your heart on what God wants for you. God will never give us what we want for us unless what we want for us is what he wants for us. Did you get that? When my desire becomes his desire, then I can get all I want. Come on, parents, you understand that. Amen, come on. That child can ask for all kinds of stuff, and you say, that's good. Amen. Amen. But if you get, unless you get that on your own, you ain't getting it from me. When that child wants what you want for her or what you want for him, my God, man, you'll boy, you'll, you'll stretch yourself so thin. Boy, you'll work 20 jobs. Amen. Make you think you are Jamaican or something. And I am a Jamaican, so I can say that. I ain't picking on Jamaicans. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so glory to God. I mean, you will do anything you can to make sure that child is blessed. Why? Because that child desires what you desire for that child. 